Welcome, Bastronauts. This is Teal's Bass Galaxy, an endless dimension of fishing legends and degenerates connecting through raw, real, in-person conversations and stories. No, this is not your average fishing podcast. There's no rules. There's no limits. Three, two, one, blast off. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's been confirmed. Aliens from another planet have landed on Earth. Sources say there's been two confirmed landing points for these extraterrestrial beings. One being Japan, and also, unexpectedly, in Minnesota at Waypoint Angler Supply, a local tackle shop on Lake Minnetonka. With the ever-expanding universe, it's no surprise that there are other planets out there that also share our love for the sport of bass fishing. And to Earth's surprise, this latest visit came from extraterrestrial fishermen light years away and many innovations ahead when it comes to fishing equipment. Some hypothesize these beings came from the planet of Naboo matching up with Mayan folklore dating back thousands of years with fishing equipment ahead of their time. It has been confirmed they left things never seen before by an Earth-born bass. Waypoint Angler Supply is the premier space station in the Bass Galaxy and has tackle that could previously only be found in Japan or the planet of Naboo. The Waypoint ship is full, but we don't know when the bastronauts from Naboo will be back. So hurry in to Waypoint Angler Supply today and stock up on that Area 51 Planet of Naboo JDM good good before your buddy is whooping that sweet ass of yours. Stop into their store on Lake Minnetonka or visit their website, waypointanglersupply.com. That's waypointanglersupply.com. For the month of May, use the code GALAXY. 0324 to save 20% on your next tackle binge. The Bass Galaxy is also supported by Veselka Fishing and Customs, Supreme Lending, Dream Team, Lake Country Insurance Services, My Wedge Motor Support, Supreme Lure Company, Just North of Memphis, Barbecue and Catering. Thank you. Dude, this is sweet, man. We're down at the Classic. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I don't know when this will come out, but uh, you guys are doing some legendary stuff in the boat business, and uh, you've been doing this a long time. I, I've been looking up to you a long time, and uh, how's that ride been, dude? Oh, man, that's kind of you to say. I, hey, the ride is uh, is a culmination of, of years, decades, I guess, of heritage woven together with a team that is really unlike any other one in the, at least in the boat building aspect of the industry. Right, but I mean, you guys are have a DNA that's rich in heritage that goes way, way back. I mean, you've been in the boat building business since you were a kid, dude. <laughs> yeah, I guess to some extent you don't have a lot of choices when it comes to the heritage that I was fortunate to have, but it, it's easy, or looking back, it was easy to fall in love with the industry because of the people that are associated with it. Not just within the walls of the of the manufacturing plant, but, but at events like we're here at today where it's it truly is a homecoming of sorts you, you're seeing friends maybe the only time this year you're going to see them but you're able to just instantly reunite and and share old stories and new ones alike right right well so you started with ranger boats now we're vex how did the vexus boats thing come about well and, and I, how I did think, that get started i guess necessity probably is the mother of invention and you know as we as we left our previous job and and what was originally my grandfather's company we felt like there was, and, and still do, that there's an opportunity to provide first-class product coupled with first-class service. And because the fact of the matter is, this product that we produce, or really any boat in this convention hall, is not a necessary product. It's, it's something that people aspire 
to own. And, and they do it because they get enjoyment out of that. And we feel like that's a critical thing to never forget, to not lose sight of the fact that we are making dreams come true. Absolutely. And I guess I've used to sell boats and sure. you know seen different brands. You were brands. really good at it, by the way. <laughs> well, I still do some of that. That's right. Uh, and I enjoy it quite a bit. And I'll be honest, man, the the care for the product, the care for the customer, it, it definitely shines through uh, me being on the dealer side of that. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. uh, I like that you guys are constantly improving and constantly innovating. Was there an issue with that? Is that Was that partially why you, you started this? Uh, maybe you know? so. You know, I think I go back to, uh, and I'll try not to use Forrest and his his philosophy too much, but it really, he, he always said this and, and he believed it and so do we, that he had three real founding principles with, with, with Ranger Boats when he created that. And I think they're the very same for us. It, number one is you have to build the very best product. That, that, that is inherently critical to the success of, 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 the, of the venture, okay? Yeah, yeah. The second thing you had to do is to let people know that you have it. Okay, and that's his simple way of saying market the product well. And whether that's through the distribution channel, the, the, the many dealers that we have that bleed the same blood that we do, or the promotion through our ambassador team, or that certainly the digital world didn't, didn't exist back then. So they use right. magazines, outdoor writers, but today we're doing it with, with well, we're sitting here doing it. We're yeah. letting people know we have it. And the third and just as critical part of that was to take care of, of the customer throughout the lifespan of the product, not just during its warranty period, not just during the delivery period. And I, and, and I see that being so important as you've watched boats get 20, 30, 40 years old, they really start to stand out. Right. The ones that were meant to last literally a lifetime. And, and so when you talk about innovation, that's the first and most critical part of the innovation is you can't just build a part or, or part of a product or, or, or a particular area and go, well, this is really great, but it's going to wear out. You do your best to, to engineer something to last forever. And I, I like to put it simply and say, build the next one better than the last one. Just, just constantly strive to do that. And, and it, if you're able to achieve that, then I think you are innovating. Absolutely. You're just constantly making the next one better than the last one. Well, I mean, you guys invented what, what used to be considered Ranger Resale, right? Uh -huh. And like building resale into a product, that's really hard to see maybe on the showroom floor. Yeah. But two, three years down the road, when you got that aluminum carpet trim, that's not going to weather right. like that mm -hmm. rubber stuff, like little things like that, man. And it's hard for people to notice that. But what's like the biggest misconception you think that people have about boats and and i guess it's hard to distinguish the difference if you it, don't look at they're them all shiny all yeah they're yeah, all shiny yeah, they're all sh I, I think the most overlooked part of the package that they're buying is the trailer i agree i, I really do i think i think it's the it's certainly the most important optional component that we control and that's why we've devoted an entire manufacturing plant to that, it's state of the art. That's why you don't see us cut corners on whether it's the coating that goes on the channel frame or the wiring that's run through the conduit. All of those things are there because I see trailers and you can see them within the walls of this place that I would call disposable. They really are meant to last for a certain period of time until it, until such time they wear out and you're gonna have to put another one under it. Sure. And you're not going to like the price of that or the rework that's associated. So I, I contend, and that's why we spend time on our website talking specifically about the trailer. Yeah. It may sound a little bit corny when you're, what, 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 what's interesting about a trailer? Well, if you'll dig deep enough, you'll find things that are interesting and, and that weighs into the purchase decision and the purchase price. Right. Because the fact of the matter is, a boat doesn't cost what you pay for it. It costs what you pay for it, less any maintenance cost, and then what it brings after your your time with it is done. Absolutely. And I contend our goal, and we're able to achieve that, uh, I hope is good or better than anybody, is that our boat might cost a little bit more up front. Again, that's not what you pay for it, but it might be the best value you could have as a customer. And I, I think a lot of people, they look at the sticker price and they get a little shocked, but they yeah. forget that. I mean, if it resells pretty good, it only costs you X amount. That's you know? right. You know, and you go back to those early days, Ranger, you know, Force was able to establish that where people would keep their boat long enough, it would bring what they gave for it. 
you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and and that's a testimony to to not only the brand but the brand's built on all of those other ingredients and the quality product being a key part of that. Sure. And sure. the service. Yeah. You know, yeah. somebody will answer the phone when you call and then you need a component for a boat that has some age on it. Well, I think what's cool is the just the factory atmosphere. When I visited the yeah. factory, mm -hmm. I mean, it's air conditioned. I mean, it's it's a really it seems like not your average boat factory. It, and, it's not, and it's a lot easier to build a great product in a great building. I can see that it, it is, and but it's also the the key part of that is that the team within the building. I, I say this a lot as people come to visit us: is we're we're proud of our facility. That's a beautiful sign out front and a beautiful showroom, etc. But it's the people inside. The people with the DeWalt drill in their hand or the gun in their hand, that those are the ones that are truly making the difference and making the product. Right. The right. building can't do it. No, no, uh, it, no. It, it's it all about people. And yeah. that's, I think, you know, it's not just the Vexus logo. There's DNA and there's people behind yeah. that logo. And I think you guys have a great story. But these boats are being built different than traditionally hand-laid hulls, which yeah, I think, sure. you know, I've seen that process mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool. Uh, but walk maybe some of the viewers who maybe don't know who aren't familiar with that. It's super unique. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to do just, you know, in a podcast like this. But, <laughs> right, but right. maybe look at it this way, that the way what, what is called traditional open molding is, is the process of applying wet fiberglass, wet being soaked with resin and that's been catalyzed into a mold. And, a, and the byproduct of that are, are emissions, styrene being the main one, um, a constant air movement to remove that uh, out of the atmosphere. Yep. It's, it's generally hot, it's sticky, and it's not the best work environment. But from the customer, maybe that doesn't matter so much to the customer, but you also get inconsistency in the part. Yeah. You know, it's heavier, it's, it's heavy, it's, it's resin rich in many places johnny's uh, hung over and he's rolling too yeah long and, and, side, and, you know, and this whatever. this boat for aaron weighs 150 pounds less than the boat for keith you know right, and that's right. that, that's accidental but it's true well with vacuum infusion we put more science in than craftsmanship sure and so we're able to design the laminate structure both digitally and physically and and the installers lay all of the components in in strategic places so you put the strength where it matters and the bulk where it matters but not where it doesn't i use lid openings as a great example yeah. if you if you traditionally build this bass boat in open molding the lid molds are or the lid openings are just soaked with resin because gravity had that effect it it it, it just soaked down it because it was built upside sure, down sure, sure. as were ours uh, we our resin content is the inverse of what open molding is. So now we're able, that's why you hear us say lighter, stronger, and faster. Right. Because it's it's factual. It, it, it can be proven that that's the case. Does it cost more? It does. But we, again, look at it maybe that Sam Walton way of we shouldn't we shouldn't put a dollar into this product that a customer is not willing to pay for. And and so it, that, it passes that litmus test. When sure, we, at least, and and it also gives us that really good work environment you spoke of. Absolutely, and I noticed it firsthand. DVX twenty two out of the box L six Verados doing sixty nine point seven. Pretty much every single one. It's so That's interesting. In, it's you know, crazy. I've watched all these variables through the years, whether it's the weight of the hull or the or the variance in the engines or whatever. Today, the the biggest variable in the in the per, overall performance of the boat is the propeller itself. I agree with yeah. that. It, yeah. it, did I get a good prop, or did I did I did I wash the cup out of it by just a little bit of sand, sand. intrusion? And and so that is that tells me that we're doing it right. Right. Then when right. we're down because that prop's still hand ground. Absolutely. You know, so there's still a guy that's either good at his job that morning or isn't. Yeah. And and that's obviously not something we can control, but it tells me that we're doing our part as a boat builder. And I said it about the DVX-22 because they run that racing blueprinted Bravo on those. Uh -huh. So those are a little more consistent they are, than them yeah. theories, I'll yeah, be honest. They, old than, Joe's been there a while, and they they put Joe on the Bravo. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, like, dude, growing up with Forrest Elwood is your grandfather. Mm -hmm. That is epic. And I'm sure you've got, you know, a whole expo's worth of stories. But, like, share one of your favorite. Like, I'm, I love those stories, man. Well, it's easy to miss Forrest and Nina when you're at the Classic. Oh, I can I mean, it's imagine. easy to miss them all the time. I shouldn't make that sound different than what it is. But, but uh, what, their, their imprint 
is, is so much easier to see when you're at this event than it is when you're driving down a two lane road and flipping, right? But, but yeah, as, as the oldest grand kid of, of, of Forrest and Nina, yeah, looking back, it was, it was a blessing. It, it, the Lord blessed me tremendously uh, with, with that and, and as a mentor, as, as, some, as, as, a, as a real dictionary of how to do life. Yeah. It was a dictionary yeah. of how to do life, how to, how, to, how to achieve the American dream, how to treat people, how to, how to put family first, how to always understand the right priorities right. And, and through different seasons of life, how to instill a strong work ethic. You know? yep. So it, I, the best stories I have with Forrest and Nina are built around work of some sort. Sure. You know, it sure. Uh, sure, did we fish together? Gosh, yeah, they knew how to have fun, but it, but it was always after the work had been done. And that might be in a hayfield, that might be in a corral with cows, or that might be in a plane with Forrest. And, and not once did I ever watch the sun set out of a fuselage of a plane with Forrest that he didn't snap a picture of. Really? Not once. And, and, it, and looking back, you know, as a young kid, maybe I didn't appreciate it, but now I get it. Now I get that he, yeah, it was another day. It was another day of doing what he wanted to do. Sure. And, and so sure. those are really good memories to me. And, you know, we toured NASA together. That's one that what? like, yeah, like it was a friend of a friend. We, we were at, it might've been this event when it was in Florida, sure, uh, sure. The early days of moving it to winter. And we go over to NASA, and, and we're, we're literally on the launch tower, Aaron, and we're riding this service elevator. It's not like the Hyatt's elevator. Yeah. I mean, it's got the chain and everything. And we ride to the top. We're, we're literally where we're science meets nature, okay? Sure, sure. And we open the door, and there stands a man waiting to ride the elevator back down. And he looks and says, oh, my gosh, you're Forrest Wood. <laughs> what? And I thought, okay, yeah, you're famous. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if, if for we're sure. if we're on the launch tower at NASA and you're being recognized, you're a famous individual. If Buzz Aldrin knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, you're doing right. good, boss. You're so anyway, good. that's just a tidbit that come to mind. But 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 yeah, I mean, uh, from the time I turned 16, I spent so many miles an hour, miles and hours, I should have said it better, with with him, you know, yeah. at events and 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 just doing life and. And it was it, it was something that I treasure and will forever. Right. You know, it, they just they it, it they did so much for the industry. They, they really did. Absolutely. Well, you're not just a boat guy. You got this little hobby called cattle, if I remember <laughs> right. Yeah, we're in the cattle business, and that's so pretty cool to me. And we, we only I, know two things in flipping: boat building and cattle. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so beef cattle mostly. Yeah, yeah. We uh, in fact, but it, it's we're in the process now of. Uh, of really improving the genetic makeup of our herd, you okay. know, yep. it, it's uh, science has has came to that industry as you might expect as well. You can take the DNA off their little ear and you can look at the at the how they compare to literally millions of other cows. Sure, okay? sure. And and there's all these EPD benchmarks, and so we're taking the same approach with that as we do these boats. Like if it, it really doesn't cost that much more to raise the best animal than it does just to raise an average one. Sure, and sure. that's the same with boat building. And and so to me, that's the fun aspect of it is now obviously the intents to get more for the product sure sure okay, they're yep. worth more because you can prove that when you go to the bull steakhouse here in tulsa and they charge you 112 dollars for a porterhouse it's because it's one of the three percent on earth that grade prime and Noted. so so that's the goal is to get to that and so now that's a that's a real fun transition we're going through i guess maybe that's my midlife crisis i don't know but well, not a Harley, but, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess it beat, does beat a motorcycle. But so, and I think part of it's the legacy of Forrest, right? Is to say, man, the guy in the cowboy hat would want you to have the best. And, Absolutely. And so that that that's what we're working on now. And I do that with my dad, my brother, and some other guys, and, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a good side hustle. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I so I know there's that genetic makeup. Because I lived next to a farmer for a while. And he had mini cows, and uh -huh. I made a mini cow website for him. Like he had like these belted galloways. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, and he's selling these mini cows like all over the country. Uh -huh. And there's a lot to that genetic makeup. There's like them pandas or whatever yeah. that mm -hmm. all the kids are buying. They buy yep. these mini cows like freaking ponies. Like, uh -huh. what? What the they hell? They can do a lot with it. It's crazy. But mm -hmm. the world's changing, and I'm like curious. I saw something about a bill with like meat and like there's all this weird stuff going on with agriculture. Yeah, they're creating meat scientifically. You know, yeah. that's not really raised. They're vacuum and... infusing meat now. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. along <laughs> those lines. But you know, the world needs fed. 
at the end of the day, and, and there's less people doing that than ever before. That generation prior to me, or the generation before that even, they're not around anymore. They're getting old and tired, and there's not as many people that are willing to come in and say, I'll do my part to provide protein to the world. Sure, And, sure. and so that, that, there's a sense of gratification comes with that as well. Right, right. Well, I mean, in the in the seed industry or that side, you've got like your Monsantos and your big yeah. powerhouses, I guess. Is there is there like push from like a big... You know, oh, the consolidation eagle man, on, like up top for nah, cows. The, the consolidations on the packing side. So, okay. so taking the animal from a finished live product to the counter. Sure. Okay, and 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 it probably needs that consolidation because that's where the efficiency is and that's where the risk is. Sure. They, they're the ones employing hundreds of thousands of people, and you know you got to put it in perspective. They kill seven hundred thousand a week in this country. It's, crazy. it's big business. Yeah, you know, absolutely. multiply that times three thousand, and you'll have a pretty good sense of the dollars flowing through. But what they, what where the consolidation will likely never happen is somebody has to produce the baby calf and grow it to a point that it can be finished out. You know that that's still a guy that's going to get his genes dirty. Sure and, sure, and the corporate world can't really do. They can't dive that deep into the business, and so that's another thing. It's it'll be autonomous. If, uh, I think it'll always be somewhat autonomous, and that's. I guess that's important, yeah, right? It, yeah, it, yeah, because because it's like no, those are the animals I raised. Yeah, absolutely. And here's how they compare. Sure, yeah. sure. Well, I mean, how back do we home, get to talking about cows because I know you're into it. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, like I got a daffron or. Uh, you gave me a badass sweatshirt one yeah, time, and that's, like those are important. They're good juju. Yeah, they're, they're they good are. juju for hunting and Super fishing. Super warm. Yeah, dude. only wear them when you're hunting and fishing. No, because don't waste the juju. <laughs> Noted. Mm-hmm. But I'm a curious dude, and I, uh, <laughs> I one thing I love about like this podcast is yeah, it's a fishing podcast, but we're all human beings, and heck, you want to talk about aliens, we can talk about aliens. That's right. Like, but you know, I fished the last three weekends. You know, I tell yeah. people this, maybe not as much as I should, but. In the world, and there are uh, competitors of ours that don't. You know, they, they, there's they're holding, they're holding a golf club on Saturday. Right, right. And, and golf I w- club and a spreadsheet. I've, I got my butt kicked over here on Grand Lake three <laughs> weeks ago. And then I went to Beaver Lake, fished with a longtime friend, and then me and my typical uh, uh, Ryan Patterson, who yeah, you know we yeah, went, yeah. were at Table Rock and getting beat by the live scopers. You know, it's like man, we fish like men today with a with a Mike McClellan's rock crawler, and he, he had twenty <laughs> pounds, we had eighteen and a half, and we barely drew a check. But man, is that still fun? Oh, you, dude, know, you can't it, be a rock crawler. And, and you know, you watch, my, you know, Rasmussen's been a friend of mine since 2016. Sure. You know, and yeah. I'm sitting here finding myself so entrenched in the Bass Tracker because it, you, I have a personal tie to it. I don't have a, there's a business tie, of course. He runs our product. Right, right, but, right. But the personal tie is I've, I've watched him and, and, and him and, and Allie and his family just are so such neat people yeah. and, and he's just a common guy from Wisconsin. Like he said on stage, man, I'm just a walleye guy trying to catch some bass. Love that. And, 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 and I think how good is our sport when you can do that, when you can, oh. you know, when you can re- yeah. literally live out a dream that maybe you didn't even have to, totally. the, to that level five years ago or six years ago. Well, and it's crazy. Cause I mean, I was, you know, three years ago, he kicked my ass at Pelican Lake. You know That's, what I is mean? Is that when he broke the record? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And I mean, he lapped the field. Yeah. So, uh, and then just watching him at Sturgeon Bay. I mean, that dude is special. And what I love about him is he lets his rod do the talking. Yeah. He's caught. You, you won't phase the guy. I don't think uh-uh. like, I wish I had more of that in me. That dryness that he has uh, in his, in his, DNA works so well in a fishing arena, right? And so my wife, uh, Lisa, I took her up there last summer over the 4th of July. Okay. I said, let's go. It's cooler in Wisconsin than it is in Arkansas in July. Let's go up there and we'll just relax. So Adam takes us out one day and she goes with us. She doesn't fish a lot, but she likes to catch smallmouth, sure, right? Sure. So why not take her with Adam? Yeah. And, and I can't do his northern accent, but he's literally in the back like just sitting down on the deck of the boat. And I'm up front trying to chase these fish I can see and catch them on fluff, and she's trying to. And he's on the phone, and he's like, oh, hang on, I've got another one. <laughs> and, and it, you know, it's a five-and-a-half-pounder. Of course. Yeah. And I'm like, how does the fish just literally search this guy out? And I, and I think there, God gives some of those guys a little something extra, and he's got it. I've seen that too many times to believe differently. I agree with that. There's that that it factor or that that dog in a guy you could just a little something different yeah Mm -hmm. like like uh you know not Kirk cousins like Kirk cousins great on the stat sheet just like me right you'll Mm -hmm. get seventh place you know i'll look really good but you know playoffs come around 
That's right. I, I use the the book Moneyball, not the movie, but the book Moneyball oh, sure, really sure. interests me because uh, Michael Lewis is really a statistician money guy, and, and, and he was able to like explain Billy Bean's concept of baseball. And you're right. I'm the guy that would have played for Oakland. You know, because I'll figure out how to get on base. Yeah. But the superstars, the ones that the Yankees are paying for, they just have a little something extra to your point. So when it's October, they're going to perform. Yeah. You can't really explain why. And I see that with Adam. And yeah, yeah. and you do other people as well. That just Jay step Shaker. up. Jay yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jay and the Father Gill kid right now who's been coming uh-huh. up, he's a really good friend of mine. And, okay. and that Gordon Father Gill, who is his dad, it's kind of a Jay Shakur yep. father and Jason. scenario. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and these kids now, there is a misconception that they're just scopers. Yeah. And I guess they're pissed about that. Uh-huh. They, yeah. It's crazy. I know better than that. They're pissed yeah. about mm-hmm. that. They're like, I like flipping the bank just, lo- just as much as anybody. Like, uh-huh. How dare you call me a one-dimensional angler? Exactly. But kind of feels like yeah that well and, and maybe in instances that's what's required and you're seeing them do that but you know that's the fun part about jay and jason is i've done this long enough now i'm watching the kids come up and be as good or, or on the same level as their dad yeah that, no trust me i you know i remember rooming with jay and jason at the sturgeon bay open and the kids 12 or whatever <laughs> yeah. and yeah. he's whipping me uh, no that scope wasn't around then uh, no, exactly. He, he, exactly he's got he's got what it takes absolutely he don't need a screen to be successful yeah. Well, you and that Patterson guy are pretty good together, and I think you qualified <laughs> for the Harris chain. And Yeah, we uh, fished the Bass Team Championship last fall. Yep. And Ryan caught your kicker in practice. He did. We win practice on events like that. Back to having that clutch. Yeah. Man, we're so good before the before the bell starts to ring, you know. <laughs> but, no, we have it. a great time together and, and, and have – I don't even know how many years we fish together, but we complement each other well, and we fish the same – power fishing the same style. It's like we say a lot. If we're chunking and winding, we got a chance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, he, I mean, he took me out on uh, Bull Shoals uh-huh. there, and uh, I, I don't need to give up what we were doing, but it was more difficult than I thought. It was like, it was like skipping boat docks with ounce baits. Yeah, and you had to put it uh-huh. right there on and the, on the X. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, super different than where we're from in terms of how to make them bite, where they're at, yeah. the speed you need to retrieve stuff. Well, the, I mean, Aaron, the fact of the matter is this entire sport is built around somebody putting money in a jar, hoping they win it back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. It doesn't matter on what scale. Yeah. This is the grandest scale where we're at, but it could be a 10-boat jackpot. And to me, when that happens, when that money goes in the jar, the complexion of what you're doing in the outdoors changes. And it becomes a competitive event on top of experience in the outdoors. That's what that's where my blood flows. Sure. You know, I'm sure. gonna fish my six or eight tournaments a year. My fun fishing's very limited. You know, it'll be with a like I was just mentioning with Adam in the summer, just spending a day out there. And obviously those are enjoyable as well. But I encourage people if you haven't done that. Don't be bashful about it. Don't be embarrassed about it. Get in and learn. Put your money in a totally. jar. Put what you can afford to in the jar because it will not only make you a better angler, it will give you a different perspective. Right. It, it will make that eight-hour day fly by. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's a student loan, right? It, that's, well, that's a good way of putting it. Loan, yeah, that's a good way. way. Actually, that is a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Probably the same amount, too. <laughs> <laughs> the government's not going to pay it back, though. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, if Rass is fishing, nobody's getting him. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, after this comes out, people will know if he wins or not. That's right. So Mm -hmm. I guess uh, he was what? Well, I'm not going to bet against the man. No No way. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I've seen him do it. And uh, he's, I would say he's more in the driver's seat. I told him that last night. I said, listen, I've been to over 30 of these things. You're right where you need to be. Uh, it, I, don't wanna, I would, I I would rather be, be going in trying to chase that five or six pounds as opposed to having that five or six pound cushion. Right, it, right. It, 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 it's, it, it's too hard to fit. You know, it's kind of like being in the lead at Daytona on the last lap. You know there's a lot of guys drafting back there. And, and, and yeah. so that, you got I think it's a you. similar feeling. And, 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 and it might not work. We'll see. Like, you're, you're right. When this comes out, we'll know. But the fact of the matter is we're darn proud of him regardless. No matter what. Yeah. Hell of a showing. Mm-hmm. And at, just to make it. Yeah. Then, mm-hmm. like, 
just to make one of these yeah. is... Oh, I remember he called me from... Ironically enough, he called me from Wheeler. It was last... I think it was May yeah. uh, when he won Wheeler. It was the same day Patterson and I won Table Rock. And so we just talked all the way home. You know, he's driving from Wheeler to wherever, and we're driving back to Arkansas. And we're he's on the box in the truck, and we're just able to share his victory and our victory the same day. And it's like... I'm, I'm to the point in life where I really don't believe in coincidences. I, I think everything's predetermined in some form or fashion. You need to acknowledge that and try to your best to follow along. Yeah, but it, yeah. it, I just look back and think, what a neat day that was. Yeah. The universe has a weird way of working that it way. It does, yes. Uh -huh. Like where if you try to... Do you trailer your big outboard? Then you need the MyWedge motor support. My Wedge keeps even the heaviest motors safe and secure on the trailer. And talk about easy. Up with the motor, on with the My Wedge, back down and ready to roll. And My Wedge is built to last. It won't rot, it won't split, it won't fail. Guaranteed. Pop on My Wedge centering clips for lateral stability and you're good to go. My Wedge. Security in a snap. To order yours, go to MyWedge.com. Hey guys, Aaron Teal here with Veselka Fishing and Customs here and excited to talk to you about my new signature series rod, the Puppet Master. My number one confidence technique is by far offshore power finesse fishing. So we've spent a lot of time and a lot of years creating the perfect bottom contact power finesse rod specifically designed to fish three ace to three quarter ounce football jigs, tubes, swing heads, dragging a swim bait on the bottom, and any bait that you need to manipulate with your hand and land that fish, this rod is perfect for it. The big thing that we found that was an issue with other rods is they were either too crisp and sensitive, where they were too fast, or they weren't quite sensitive enough and they had the right action. So what Dane built with this rod is the most sensitive bottom contact rod I've ever held in my hands. But the big thing is on long cast, it's got the power to drive that hook home, but more importantly, it's got a parabolic action that's gonna bend deep down in the rod to make sure that, let's say football jig or goby tube isn't popping that small mouth, mouth open and keeping that bait in the back of their head where it belongs, allowing you to have increased leverage and landing more bass. You're gonna have to pry this rod from my cold dead hands. This is the Puppet Master. You can find it on VeselkaFishing.com or at Waypoint Angler Supply. Check them out. Most tournament anglers and guides are not covered fully or properly. Most insurance policies don't cover exposure due to tournaments and guiding. Taking the chance of using the wrong insurance gives the insurance company an out when settling a claim. How will the insurance company know that your fishing tournaments are guiding? Well, social media is their number one resource. And guess what? They use it. Lake Country Insurance offers one of the only products that can cover both tournament and guiding use in your vessel. Anglers don't seem to hesitate spending fifty dollars to $100,000 for a boat. Why risk that large asset? All because you wanted to save a few extra shekels. Are you nuts? Call the folks at Lake Country Insurance today and make sure you have the proper coverage for your boat before the unexpected happens. Call 612-285-3113 today or visit their website, lcisagency.com. That's lcisagency.com. Attention all Bastronauts. This podcast is supported by the Bass Galaxy's title sponsor, Waypoint Angler Supply, the Midwest's new landing pad for hardcore anglers just like you and me. If you're looking for the sneaky goods you can't find anywhere else, look no further. Waypoint Angler Supply has the largest offering of JDM tackle in the Midwest, and they are right here in Minnesota on Lake Minnetonka. This is truly a place every bass fisherman in Minnesota needs to visit because we finally have a tackle shop in the state that's as dreamy as the ones you find down south. And the staff at Waypoint Angler Supply understands the various needs of us anglers, which is why you'll find the selection there so enticing. 
Ross and the folks at Waypoint Angler Supply are passionate about carrying the right stuff, providing an authentic customer experience, and they listen to the anglers. And it doesn't end at JDM Baits. They stock all the top U.S. brands, as well as local Minnesota brands like the Selka Fishing and Customs, Arsenal Fishing, Bait Lab Custom Swim Baits, All Terrain Tackle, Bagley Northland, Outcast Tackle, and more. So stop into their store on Lake Minnetonka or visit their website, waypointanglersupply.com. That's waypointanglersupply.com. For the month of May, use the code GALAXY0324 to save 20% on your next tackle binge. For something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And fight the universe. It almost will fight you right back. You hear it talked about in our sport about letting the fish come to you. Yeah, and and I think that's in essence what we're saying. Well, it when you is, win practice, you're kind of just yeah, like floating in the universe, right? That's floating right. in a new dimension, mm-hmm. new galaxy, and then tournament comes around, and now you're like, yeah, I yeah. got to do this. Yeah, you, before you, the day you even put starts, pressure on yourself, and I, I see that with some of these guys that are really talented at it, is they fish every day differently, without the memories or without much of it. Yeah, and they just kind of go and 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 you know. I, they just have a way of just pulling in that pocket and saying, there's probably one laying right here. Yeah, and and yeah. That, that's fun to watch. It is. Yeah. It, it is. What's your best, like, what's one of your favorite moments with Patterson? I know at times you guys probably bickered like schoolgirls. Oh, we have moments, but generally speaking, it's, <laughs> it's like a brother relationship. Yeah. You know, about like, I guess I'd liken it to two brothers fishing together. But, you know, you certainly go back to the winning moments, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but there's there there's just there's i think this is especially true in team tournaments right yeah and i think that's why i like them so much because i i'm really a team oriented type person it's sure. always the name on the front of the shirt right and, right and so i look back and think of the of the wins we've had when we had no idea to your point that we were on any fish at all and and there's a consistency to that it happens to be every time we've won Right, that yeah. you just kind of go fishing that day, and you stumble on this, and you stumble on that, and by the third or fourth fourth fish, it's kind of rolling in our head. And we're like, "Hey, pull in there!" No, pull in there. That's when you know it's your day. And and so those are the moments I think from a fishing perspective that you just look back. And but you can also take last Saturday, you know, hey, we we nutted it. You know, I saw, I used a tin cup analogy when we got in the truck. I just leaned my hand over and I said, "Give me another ball. <laughs> Give me another ball," because we. We're getting that thing on the green if it takes 12 swipes. I love and, it. But, you know, there's this three-year-old daughter who I just worship in the back seat, and she's riding back with us. And they, you know what? It's okay. Yeah. Not, not mm-hmm. winning's okay, too. The bigger things in life. That's that right. Way. Mm-hmm. Bigger things in life. Well, jumping back to the boats thing, you got a new model this year. And we I do. haven't driven it yet, but uh, Littner was telling me about it. Good. And uh, I guess... I like the I like the VXs quite a bit. Uh, uh-huh. What was the reason for the new model? Well, I think we're constantly back to my point of build the next one better than the last one. You know, I think you learn some things. We, our product was entirely new, right? Mm-hmm. In 2019, yeah. when we we're in Knoxville and launched those things, yeah. And and so we've just learned as we went. And and I'm I'm glad you spent time with Littner because he's got a lot more seat time in one than I do. Right. Right. But right. there are people that that like the lower profile, more traditional size, mm-hmm. let's call it. But what we've tried to do here is make sure and not lose any of that Vexus DNA. In fact, improve right. upon the DNA. Just keep chasing the EPDs. So whether it's the new, like there's little things that I really like in the boat. It's the little trash can that folds out. That's nice. The, the rearrangement of the cooler and the relocation of the bump board. That might sound like a little thing, but you spend enough hours out there, it becomes a big thing, right? For sure. But I'm like you. I've still I've grown accustomed to VX21, and I want that size because I want the baddest fishing machine on the water. I mean, it's and, it's like driving an Escalade down the freeway. And I've gotten dude. older, Aaron. I don't like getting beat up. I'll give up two mile an hour. That's fine. Yeah, it, we I you never don't get past it. very often. Often and you sure don't get past headed back to weigh in. Totally. Well, yeah. going fast is fun, but like people don't consider wind waves when they consider it's speed. a trade off. That VX21 yeah. is the fastest boat on the water 90% of the time if we're talking Leech Lake. Yeah, I mean, I know? could get a Corvette and find my way back to flipping faster <laughs> than I could in my Suburban, but I know which one I'd rather drive. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So. so, this one now, so it's a slim down and about four inches shorter. Right? Yeah, it's a little shorter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, same bottom though. It's the yes, same chisel. Yeah, yeah. So lower center of gravity, Littner was talking about on the pedal, being that you're not standing as high, mm-hmm. it, it's really solid up there. Yeah. Like no movement. Uh-huh. Is it a, 
my assumption would be it's going to be a little more nimble, like around docks. I or think stuff nim- like that. Nim- if I had to sum the work boat up in two words, it's more nimble and sporty. Yeah. Than our than our VXs that we came with previously. Sure. Doesn't sure. take anything away from the existing VXs. It's just more nimble and sporty. You know, you're trading that off. Uh, length equals ride. It always has, and there's no way you can physically get past that. Right. But we, you're right. We kept the same running surface, the same V entry. So it's going to ride, in my opinion, superior to anything else in its class. But it's not going to ride like the VX21 does. Apples and oranges, <laughs> right? Yeah. Apples and oranges. So s- speeds. We ain't gonna hold people to speeds. Yeah, right? but, it, but it, I mean, the boat is smaller and lighter. Yeah, it, it will run faster, but it, it's always a trade-off. You know, how many how many depth finders you're gonna bolt to the bow of that <laughs> thing? Which trolling motor did you choose? Do you have shallow water anchors on the back? You know, because people don't think about the wind drag that's associated. It's not just weight, but totally. wind drag. Yeah. You know, take your arm and run 50 miles up the lake and hold it up. Oh yeah. And then understand that that's exactly what your shallow water anchor's doing. Totally. Yeah. And so, these trolling motors aren't lighter than they're they not, used and to they're be. up there where that weight's more sensitive. The totally. farther forward you go, it really doesn't matter as much in the back. But when you get from the driver's seat forward, weight makes a huge difference. Well, each boat has a balance point. And it it does. seems like mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people. They want lithiums in the back, right? Yeah. Uh, But there's a balance point to a boat. Sometimes a boat likes weight in the back. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of weight in the front. I mean, boats, you've got drag, horsepower, and the boat needs to lift out of the water. And and they all do it a little bit differently. But this lithium craze going on, have Uh you guys had to compensate in the back of the boat for that at all? Not really. It's... uh I tell people, I get asked the lithium question a lot. We do business with Pro Guide Batteries, great organization. Sure. They build a great battery. And so they build them in, in lead acid, AGM, or lithium. I tell people, go go ahead and buy the lithium battery. Don't do it for weight and performance savings. Right. Buy right. the battery because of the other characteristics that lithium has. You can charge it instantly. You know, it, right. it, it, it lasts longer, uh, so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is I'm still a good old lead acid guy. I've, I, I haven't had any trouble out of it yet. I char- they got plenty of time to charge. You know, hey, Adam here at this event or whoever's fishing it, their batteries are not getting as long to charge because of the duration of their day. Right, so, right. So lithium would become a critical part but i'm fishing one day derbies you yeah, know i absolutely. charge it the night before after i've practiced it's fine yeah so i think i think we just have to be careful about adding cost unnecessarily you know you, you, you do it because you believe in it and you understand that you're adding the cost to the product that's one thing we fight is a boat cost exactly what you ask of it and and so we've got two vxs's in here twenty thousand dollars apart Right. And right. it's all just equipment. Yep. Every yep. bit of it. The hull's the same, trailer's the same, engine's the same. <laughs> it's all just the equipment configuration. And we do we did that to illustrate that that you know, not indifferent than a three quarter ton pickup. You can buy a three quarter ton work truck or you can buy the high country. <laughs> right. Loaded right. down with a diesel and Allison transmission and there's a huge spread between those two. Absolutely, absolutely. But the best part about you guys is is you're constantly improving. Like nobody else seems to be pushing the envelope like you guys and the aluminums yeah. has been quite the evolution i mean that was a, a revolutionary product when you guys came out with them it's the they're badass i'm just gonna say it but the fact that you guys are always reworking and tweaking those now you've got a dang picnic table love making station up front <laughs> like that thing is huge dude well i uh, all of this goes back to the vision randy hopper has yeah with innovation it does and he deserves the credit and his team listen i'll i'll, I'll play my part but I, I promise you the vision comes from him and the fact of the matter is my opinion we've changed the definition of an aluminum fishing boat We've done more in that category than we even have in fiberglass. We talked about yeah. infusion, all those things. But if you look at what the adage of your grandpa's tin boat compared to what we've got in this booth, there's a world of difference. And 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 I hope that people understand that it's cool to run an aluminum boat, especially cool. if it's one of ours, because I contend it's a better fishing platform and a, certainly a better value than what you'll see in a lot of other uh boats built with a different material absolutely there's been few boats where i can put somebody in it and give them like a true wow factor yeah like close your eyes uh-huh. tell me if this is that's why we're doing demos class. everywhere we can Smart, you know just dude. because people need to experience that to understand it yeah, yeah yeah well i mean there's a lot of misconceptions about aluminum boats and i think you can't get as cocky with an aluminum boat as a fiberglass boat but not everybody needs a 20 foot fiberglass boat no very few do truthfully right yeah. mm-hmm. and with you know with 
what costs are associated, you can, if you want four screens, yeah. you can get four screens on an aluminum boat. You I can. mean, yep. Yeah, you're sta so. standing on the front deck the same way you are in a fiberglass. Right. One. Yep. Right. What's your best selling aluminum boat? The 1980, 1980. because it hits such a nice, you know, 150 rated. That boat's always been a good size on Absolutely. many waterways across the country. Buy a 19 foot boat with a 150, make your choice on a single or tandem axle trailer, and you will have a nice product for what your application is. Well, and it's perfect for that high school angler because it's not too dangerously yeah. fast. I right? saw that when we were up at Intune's open house. I made a middle note just to watch everybody that got in those AVXs and most of them were young men in jerseys and and as a result that's another reason we've introduced our contingency program for Vexus Varsity and Vexus University is we want these kids to, to be rewarded for fishing out of our boat and to have this cool banner that they can hang up in their in their dorm room or, or their bedroom whatever ultimately their shop as they grow older and Tackle Warehouse has worked with us we're going to give them a Tackle Warehouse card worth $500 or a thousand uh, that's pretty cool when you're when, you know Kidding freshman candy. Yeah, dude. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's the next best thing to currency. For, yeah, for uh -huh. sure. For sure. Might even be better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, um, you as a person, have you always wanted to do this? Like, no. To, mm -hmm. No. No, it comes as a it, it come as a very big surprise to me. Really? Yeah, growing up, it, it, it happened, uh, well, again, about no coincidence, is the day I turned 16 years old, Randy Hopper was at my birthday party. He said, what are you doing the rest of the week? I said, well, I'm working at this boat dock, hauling hay. He said, why don't you go to the dealer meeting? Why don't you go to our national dealer meeting and just and, and just help out? Okay, sounds fine. You know how you are at 16. Yeah, yeah. So I meet up the next morning with Gary Howard, longtime friend, still is to this day. And we travel, incidentally enough, to Grove, Oklahoma, to here okay. to Grand Lake. Yeah. And when I come home, and we worked like dogs that week. I mean, we did. I'm, you're talking about cleaning boats. We cleaned 50, <laughs> 60 boats multiple wow. times, sweated, it's hot. And, and I met so many people. And of course, Forrest and Nine over there, and it made them proud. And, and I, I come home with a different perspective on life and thought that men are so much more out there. Yeah. And this industry is a big part of that. And from then on, I think that's when the paradigm shifted in my mind to say, and now I look up and realize that was over 30 years ago, dude. Yeah, that wow. was over 30 years ago. And, and it still has those moments where it just, man, you're just glad to be a part of it. Totally. And, and, and to play a role, whatever that role is. And, and we've got young guys that are coming in and helping down. They've got that same, like, just gleam in their eye that I remember I must have had. And, and so it, 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 it reinvigorates somebody that has done this 30 years. Totally. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, there seems to be hunger in youth. And when yes, you, for yeah, sure. But mm -hmm. it seems to be like we're losing that a little bit. So yeah. that when you see that hungry person they're easier to pick out yeah you got to mix the green with the gray for sure right and for that sure. because the gray's got the experience and the green's got the want to and if you can blend that right and i see us doing that throughout our manufacturing plant throughout our sales team throughout the organization and that i think that's probably like our biggest role sure is, is to help make that transition so we can keep the dream alive for years to come absolutely absolutely well i'm going to talk to Randy Hopper later. I just know That's he's a awesome. super humble dude. So maybe you can speak about him because he's yeah. not one to, he's not one to gloat and, and I wouldn't expect Well, he to, learned but, it from Forrest, right. you know, frankly, he growing up, uh, literally as a young man, uh, of course I've known him my entire life. And, and if you just ranked talent in the world of boat building, he tops them all. He tops them all in versatility and in knowledge, and you're right in his humbleness and his genuine qualities. And so, you know, how could I have a better person to partner up and just run alongside life with, and you know, as far as a business career goes? And so, yeah, I'm anxious that you're getting to talk to him because it's, um, we, we take, it, you could take it for granted because you're around him all the time. Yeah. And so it's always good for him to come out and, and, and be out in the industry uh, like he is. I'm looking at him right now as we're talking and, yeah. and the guy's just, he's just extremely talented and does it with grace. Well, he's a damn sweetheart, but like, you, I remember we were talking about this one time and you mentioned like, he's the only guy who can like build a boat. Like he can do every bit of it. Yeah. To like finish. Yeah. He can do every bit of it. Probably and, better than the installers doing it there, you know. And yeah. I mean, if we're talking about websites or like somebody coding something, yeah. there is back end coders, front end coders, then there's the, you know, the architect of uh -huh. all of that. And nobody can do yeah, all of it. Exactly. They all can do that specialty stuff. So the fact that he knows every bit of the process allows him to be the leader that 
he is with it. Well, and I think it shows through in the product. Oh, because, for sure. You know, because that's, you know, back to banging on the corporate world, but uh, the, the corporate world, you may have all kinds of degrees, but you don't have the boat building degree he's got. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the, a difference between, like, what you learn in college. You don't learn how to do stuff in no, college. No, you don't. You, mm -mm. you maybe learn how to think. Yeah. You know, it mm -hmm. maybe teaches you how to think and a cultural experience, but you went... Where'd you go to school again? I was at Arkansas Tech. Okay. That was strategic in nature because Lake Darnell was on fire in the late you. 90s. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I went down there and, uh, and man, did we fish a lot. Cool. It, was, it was chock full of four and five pounders. Fun, dude. Learned, learned to fish in knee deep water that was muddy and yeah. throw a swim bait and a buzz bait and flip a jig. I'm like getting Steve Kennedy vibes right Yeah, that, now. that was like, yeah. that was the real education. Cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a blast. And it's, it's weird because I'm from Minnesota and there's so many lakes around. Then you uh -huh. come down south and you basically have these just, I call them like mega lakes. You yeah. Got megalithic structures of lakes yeah that, i mean our home lake's know, a thousand miles of shoreline it's crazy yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like <laughs> riding with patterson down that thing i'm like where the hell are we <laughs> <laughs> but um dude that's awesome so where are you going where are we going with vexus like is the plan to keep what's the what's the five-year outlook on it the just five one step outlook, at a time well it, it always is the market will dictate some of that but uh, to be clear, we're not out to be the biggest. Uh, we, when we started uh, again here with Vexes, it was it was to be the very best, define yeah. the very best. Yeah. And so size is not the most. Obviously, we need to be large enough to to take care of our uh, uh, of our team members, of our customers, provide a provide a value to our local area, provide our value value to our dealers. But I think it's just to continue to innovate and build product that people aspire to own and can sure, you know, sure. That, that 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 model hadn't changed from the day the concrete dried absolutely yeah. well i when i tell the story it, it's just crazy like bass pro shops purchases ranger triton stratus i can't think of a different business philosophy than ranger the yeah. bass pro shops like that's like oil and water well it's two different philosophies very sure. different mm -hmm. you know the the whole Johnny's whole career was built on a business philosophy. Mm -hmm. Forrest's whole career was built on a business philosophy, and they seem to be very different. Yeah. Well, we may share the town, you know, sure. to a degree, and and we're okay with that because we want we want our town to be successful. We right, want our yeah. we want the families to be fed. We we want the GDP of that area to to be sufficient for our school districts and things of that sort. So, we're not out to get anybody. Right. We're really not. We're just out to to carve out our piece of the pie that provides the very best product in that segment. Well, I noticed that when you drive through Flippin, you can tell that Forest you you guys do care about the community and you give back to the it's community. Home. Yeah. You give back to the community and I think that's yeah, a lost art nowadays. Yeah, they named the preschool after exactly. my grandparents. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of important to it us. It is. Yeah. It is. The mm -hmm. flipping bobcat. That's right, man. I was a bobcat <laughs> that's through what's and up, through. Dude. How many people live in Flippin now? Oh, about a thousand, eleven hundred, okay. something like that. Okay. But the daytime population is probably three times that. Sure. Yeah. So how far do people typically commute? You'll see them drive thirty miles. Okay. There's there's exceptions to that, but I'd say if you had an if that's if you had just an the average, other side of the river. Yeah, yeah. Thirty <laughs> miles is probably a pretty common you know sure. trend. Well, that White River thing is kind of special, and uh, you know I've got to trout fish on uh -huh. it twice, and I think I just got super lucky with a big one that one year, you did. but. Uh, talk about the history of the white. Is that kind of like so, that's something that dates so far back, and you can tell when you you stayed on at one of them cabins. You can feel like, it, can't you? Oh yeah. my gosh, mm -hmm. there's something super magical about well, it. Well, it started all of this. Yeah, uh, you know, without Bull Shoals Dam, it's just flipping's just a farming community. Sure, it still would be. You know, a, I suppose a, a struggling farming community, and you know, it dates back to the to the late '40s, early '50s. Forrest helped construct the dam. You know, worked on it from the day he turned 18 until they were flipped the lights on. Dude, and I stood at the top of that, and I yeah. wondered how many people How died cool would that, that have been at 18, oh right? Oh, my gosh. And, and so from there, then it then it they, they put these trout in this cold water stream as a result of, of, of the cold water killing off the bass, and they grew, and they got big, and people's like, wait a minute, you can go catch these things and leave it to forest to be right there in the thick of things. I'm, uh, in fact, my mother just recently acquired a film that's like an hour long, and it's 1957. 
Whoa. And it's forest guiding on the river. It's the first time the floodgates got open. Nobody's serious? got footage that goes back that far. Oh my God. And, 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 and you look at that and you just think, what a time that would have been. Not one house up and down that river. You know, just totally virgin to everything. And then, of course, the lake backs up and the bass get big. And this dude named Ray, Ray Scott shows up at Beaver Lake and is like, let's hold a derby. Yeah. And Force is like, I think I'll go over there and see what's happening. And he does. And he comes back with like five guys that say, man, that boat you're in is pretty cool. Force used to say it all the time. I just ask everybody I saw if they wanted a boat. Enough of them said yes. <laughs> and, and, that's, and, and he says that jokingly, but there's a lot of truth to it. For sure. And, and they go back, and the next thing you know, as a, what started as a, as a way to keep the, his guides employed through the winter, because obviously it was off-season, they went to building boats, and it just quickly overtook the guide service. Sure, sure, And, and sure. you know, it's so fun to hear my mother and others talk about those late 60s, early 70s. And, oh, and you man. know, it was full of trials and tribulations, too. Their plant burned to the ground in May of 71. You know, I was a tornado. Ask Randy about that yeah, one. <laughs> you should, because I'm not sure if he started the fire, but he was sure there. Greg, and, uh, I think uh, we'll get to the bottom of that but, today. But you just think about those hardships and and how they are, how they're woven into the success. And I think it's easy for us in life to think everything should be rosy all the time. And and if you'll just that's what history is good for is really looking good. back and saying, wait a minute, it isn't always just that you don't catch five pounders every flip. There's got to be some bad that goes with it, and and understanding how to navigate that and and. And that, again, is just kind of bred into what we do. We didn't have COVID in our business plan. Right. We didn't. Right. You right. know, nobody did. No. And, and so you, you have to deal with it. And, and the pillars of this industry, you know, two come to mind specifically are Jerry McInnes and, and Forrest Wood. They both went through those seasons of life. And Jerry wrote a book and, and about it. And I just love the book. I've given it to people. I've reread it myself at Seasons of Life where you just need to look and go, okay, how did this guy go through this transition from being an aspiring Major League Baseball player to being cut? And then he shows up and flipping Arkansas and crawls in a boat with Forrest Wood and it just you know wow. or, yeah or how is he in Connecticut shooting a film uh, for his fishing hole television show and there's this little sports network on the on the television he goes and finds a sports network and and he 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 buys time this network turned into ESPN okay and and to this day the fishing hole TV show is the second longest running show on ESPN second only to Sports Center. Oh my and those God. stories don't get told enough. No, you know that's... because uh, because Jerry was a dear friend of mine. We lost him and Forrest within months of each other. And again, that's where you go back and reread his book and go, okay, that it, it, it wasn't always great for them either. How do we get through this? Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Um, partially why I started this podcast is like Minnesota bass fishing history. Yeah, like, I talked to some high school kids and I asked them if they knew who Jim Moyna was. Uh huh. And they did. Uh huh. And there's something wrong with that in yeah. our parts. Or Dean Capra or whoever. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they don't know who these guys are. And then I go on the internet and there's no story about these guys. Yeah. So, like, my goal is to kind of just record, like, some That's of that awesome, history man. and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and you talked about crisis. And, and to me, like, you, you can't fix anything if there's not anything to fix. A. Exactly. And crisis creates opportunity if you look at it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And dealing with that strengthens a human being as an individual that's where the strength it really gets yeah built. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like i remember that story you told about forrest i don't know if it was a tornado or the factory when like he had to make all them phone calls and yeah. paperwork and like people were willing to wait yeah, his plant like, burned down with no insurance, oh and all the God. toolings built uh, burned up. And so, in forty days and forty nights, they rebuilt a building and retooled. You know that you talk about dedication, yeah. right? And and so uh, I keep a letter. He wrote to the dealers a letter, and I've got a copy of it. I keep it just handy. I think he but, showed me it. Yeah, because yeah, I read it because his postscript is the best part. Because he says, "Just stay in the buggy." Ranger will come back being better than ever. And and his stay in the buggy, he always had a way of weaving in the old cowboy stuff, right? For sure. And yeah. and the stay in the buggy is in the event of a runaway, if you'll ride it out, you'll eventually get the get the team under control. Sure. And that was I think that was what his one statement, that's all he had to really say. The content of the letter was superseded by his postscript where he said, Everybody just hang on. Yeah. Just hang on. We'll we'll be all right. And Man. and that's what a what a good life lesson and something to just constantly have it your in your pocket to go okay stay in the buggy totally. okay stay in the buggy yeah, yeah it's gonna be all right well while we're in history mode like 
there's been constant innovations throughout the sport. If you look at a 1970s bass boat, it, it looks quite a bit different sure. mm -hmm. than what you see today. So if we were to put them side by side, it's like, oh my gosh, but yep. it was a slow evolution and you guys were at the front of that. Yes. And I would say you've been innovating since the 70s. You were the first to a lot of things. Uh -huh. And um, there's a lot of people that maybe don't know that, like yeah. which things and, and how that all came about. Well, I mean, just the simple live well. Yeah, and have them. Yeah. You guys were the first to yeah. put a live well in a bass boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forced, you know, in the team, whoever the team was at the time. I wasn't around. I wasn't born. But, yeah, they're like, man, we got to keep these fish alive. This isn't going to work. We can't drag them with stringers up the launch ramp and weigh them. And, and upright level flotation is one I really love. That's because a good Because Forrest and, and the team, again, helped write the standards that we still go by today to say these boats have got to flow. Especially yeah. at a certain length, and, and people have to be able to survive the conditions that they might find themselves in. And, you know, there's just so many. I could go on a, a long time about them, uh, but it, it just, you're right. It is. It Are you ready to reel in your next home purchase or refinance? Supreme Lending's Dream Team can help guide you through the entire mortgage process, from pre qualification to closing. They have a wide variety of home loan programs in their tackle box, including down payment assistance and first-time home buyer options. Just ask me. I trusted Aaron Degas, a bass fisherman just like you and me, and Supreme Lending's Dream Team to help finance my first home. Contact Aaron Degas and the Dream Team today by scanning the QR code or giving them a call at 763 Three two six zero six seven seven. That's seven six three three two six zero six seven seven. Did I catch a seven in there? Or visit their website, Aaron Dagus dot Supreme Lending dot com. That's A A R O N D A E G E S dot Supreme Lending dot com. Supreme Lurico introduces a revolution in bass fishing with our triumphant trio, the Supreme Slug, Lil Slug, and Slaw. Leading the charge is the Supreme Slug, a legend revived after two decades, its unique shape and built-in hook slot redefine technical brilliance on the water, giving you an edge like never before. But the saga continues with the Lil Slug, a miniature powerhouse that mirrors the majesty of the Supreme Slug. Don't let its size fool you. It packs the punch needed to lure in those elusive bass. And for the ultimate bass feast, there's the slaw. A craw representation with the same irresistible characteristics as the supreme slug. It's bass seduction at its finest, designed to trigger predatory instincts. Exclusively crafted for bass enthusiasts, Supreme Lurico brings you a trio that's not just baits, they're bass magnets. Supreme Lurico, cast in gold, reel in glory. Hello, Bastronauts. Introducing the new demo program from Veselka Fishing and Customs. That's right, you can try a rod before you buy it. If you're fishing the team trail or the champions tour this upcoming season, you're eligible for this. There's no down payment. There's no upfront purchase required. Just contact Mr. Veselka before the event. And let's say you want to try a new hair jig rod out for Okaboji or Malax, or you need a new tube rod going into a smallmouth event. Contact Mr. Veselka ahead of time and you can actually try that rod out and practice before you buy it. You have to return it before tournament day though, unless you're going to buy it. Because these things are weapons. They're absolute weapons. So. That's the new demo program from Veselka Fishing and Customs. Contact Dane today and schedule the finest rod using experience north of the Mason-Dixon. Hey guys, Gaff with Waypoint English Supply here. Just wanted to highlight the fact that we have the big bass resource right here. Obviously, everybody in Minnesota knows about Kytex and the little or swim baits like these bait labs here. But we're here to have the big baits here in the store. We got Huddlestons, we've got the dangerous swim baits, the jointed claw glide baits, and the bull shooter glide baits, but it's not only the baits. We've got big rods, big reels, big line, and all that good stuff for you guys to go ahead and chase your biggest fish of your life. So swing on into Waypoint English Supply and get hooked up with the biggest tackle around. 
it has always been more evolution than revolution, but if you wrap enough of that evolution together, it becomes revolutionary. For sure, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. That's well said. Yeah, that's, that's well what said. we've tried to do with Vexus. You know, we yep. started with a clean slate and said, no, 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 nobody's gonna compare our boat and, and look, feel, or whatever to something else that might be out there. You, and it might be it might be a bit extreme for the guy that's used to looking at, you know, at a certain size or shape or whatever. But in our mind, we, we just tried to be so out in front of it that the world would come to us as opposed to us trying to get to the world. You're doing a great job of it. I remember when you guys first came up and we came down as a dealer uh -huh. and you were, <laughs> You got to tell this story about the church, man. The church. The church where the first where that R and it's like an old church. Oh where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like R and D facility. Where this stuff yeah. was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Randy's building. He <laughs> on one side of it he had hot rods, and on the other had, they had planted a church. And yeah. and and it's like okay, well, why not? We we start in here, and we did, and built offices, and you know, design product, and still to this day still use it. I was in there last week yeah. building a new mold. It's That's just crazy. A, yeah, it, those are memories that it's easy to lose sight of, and you have to go back to once in a while. And go yeah we really did kind of start at the bottom well yeah. it was just cool because people buy from people people are people and, sure. and coming down there like you'd expect some corporate bullshit right yeah. and like mm -hmm. coming down and you you drive through a small little town just like home like yeah. that way and uh you walk into this church and and these people care about what they're doing and mm -hmm. they're it's a very different feel than i would have ever we hear it that a lot. I yeah. think it's just in second nature to us. Yep. But the fact, it really is hard to get anything done in life with clean boots. You know, they're going <laughs> to yeah. have to get a little bit dirty once in a while. I respect and, it. And, 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 and I think that's that, that's just really our MO is that it, it, it's not necessarily their job or his job or whatever. We, we, it's the job. Let's just figure out how to get it done. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I remember you guys, the first time we erected this display, you stayed and helped us tear it down. Absolutely. You know, so, and I'll do so, it today. Yeah. So you subscribe to the same philosophy. And that's why that the relationship was just instantly a good one because it wasn't like, well, I'm going to go catch a plane. And go home, watch the rest of the guys. Let the rest of the guys handle. There's some of that has to happen in life, but it. You look up and there's a job. You fill it, and and I, and I think the world needs more of that. Well, you can't change the world, but you can change your attitude, your you work can. ethic, mm -hmm. and it, at the end of the day, um, I try to live by this. Right, um, I can sleep good if at the end of the day I can say I gave it everything I got. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, we, uh, I don't know, when you mentioned that, I, I, I got to say this, I lost a dear friend, our family, about a month ago. He's a coach, well thought of, a coach and administrator. Everybody loved him, and his son works for us. This is his first classic. And he had a statement that he used in his coaching. And, and now they're selling T-shirts with this, with this slogan on it that uh, Ron Chanskowski was his name. And it, what he used to tell his players was, go as hard as you can for as long as you can, and it's my job to tell you when to stop. And, and that really has resonated with me since we've lost him because that's exactly what you just said. When you lay down at night, did you go as hard as you could for as long as you could? Because that's the important part. The rest of it will work itself out if you'll do that. Right, right. It's hard to, I think that's hard to do for people. Because it is. Yep. You focused on that, that mm -hmm. end goal. It's, it's, it's hard to enjoy the ride yeah. when you want to get somewhere, but like, it's a fun ride, this it thing is. called life. So we got to remember to enjoy it. And I hope you're doing that because you're a busy bee. No, we are. We're having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, well, yep. you, are you on the balance beam or are you off the yeah. balance no, beam? No, I'm on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, my good. wife's here. We're having fun. This awesome. But it makes a great trip and, and looking forward to getting back to work tomorrow. Really. Absolutely. Truly well, I can tell you're so. a family man. And yeah. I know you got, how many kids do you have again? got a daughter. Yeah, I got awesome. a daughter and a son-in-law and a grand dog. Sure. Yeah, a really cute little grand, grand dog. Grand dog? What mm -hmm. kind of dog? It's a little miniature golden doodle. Okay, a little ankle biter. I'm pretty fond of it. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how that works because we share custody. Okay. Yeah. So like we, we borrow the dog and like right now she gets to be with her mother, but I promise tonight when we get home, we're probably going to steal her. No, I meant like making the doodle. Like, oh, I, isn't the doodle small and the yeah, golden it, big? Like yeah. which one's the male? No, she's like, which one's she's the male? She's like 18 pounds. Yeah. I don't, I, I when don't, they cross I don't, them, when they I don't, breed them. Yeah. I don't know what happened upstream. I feel like I you couldn't <laughs> have a golden come out of a doodle. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? Not so it's sure gotta how be happened. like the golden's All I know is that she, that crossbred is really cute. Oh, I bet. And the demeanor on a dog, I, I don't have time to train a dog. But uh, I, <laughs> you probably shouldn't try. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not built for that. Uh, I need like a low maintenance pet. 
like a cat or something. You know, somebody that's crazy enough to listen to this podcast, I hope they're on, like, on a long trip, you know, like going that's down I-35, yep. and they're going, what on earth are these guys going to talk about next? Yep, that's how it goes. <laughs> it gets me, uh, yep, gets you through a long drive. That's why we made it, because um, long drives can be boring. So, and tunes, you know, you get sick of... Uh, yeah, they replay them. They, yeah. Oh, I don't even listen to the radio. That shit's junk. But um, <laughs> Yeah, you have to use Spotify to get the good stuff. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, that Gaston, so there's like a, there's people like flying into that place. Oh, yeah, like on the White River strip. there. Yeah, sometimes like, they land and sometimes they end up in the river. But I was yeah. going to ask that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they do. You have any fun? Or our hayfield. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, these, who's traveling? These are like pretty ritzy folk. Like, yeah, I think in. some, you know, doctors, lawyers, those type of guys that <laughs> think they're pilots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why i don't fly yeah Mm -mm. them little planes are a little scary yeah um yeah uh but what's like you they land in the river no i mean when they crash there yeah no they're not intending to land how many have you seen crash oh there's probably been a dozen or so that i can recall a dozen yeah Mm -hmm. i think they're better now technology's helping them with it and you know like no don't don't leave the bar and crawl in this plane and overweight it in the summertime and think you're going to clear that bluff because you're not going to yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Driving in those hills, all I can think of is there's a bunch of moonshiners that we don't know <laughs> well, about up there. I know a few. <laughs> <laughs> you do? Okay, okay. That's awesome. Is that still kind of, was that, well, that's more like Smoky Mountain, Tennessee yeah, culture, well, right? Yeah, it's but, east of us. We're in the Bible Belt, too. Yeah, there, I got there, you. It's like Forrest always said, there's more good people than bad. The bad ones just get all the publicity. That's a fact, especially <laughs> today's age, man. Yeah. You're living the land of 5% of weirdos <laughs> on true. the internet, right? And I'm unfortunately one of them. Uh, <laughs> but... Okay, so you've seen a lot of pros, and if if we're done talking, you just let me know. Okay. I, I respect our time, and I'm very grateful they're for They're probably it, tired so. of listening to me. Mm, I guarantee they're not. <laughs> so the weird thing is, so I, these these run however long they run, and, and I would have never thought this, but the average listen time on this podcast is the entire episode. No kidding. Yeah. Once they start, they stay. Yeah, we don't yeah. have, I'm not a well, viral blockbuster yeah. views, but, mm-hmm. you know, people like people, right? Yeah. And people... We're losing that human interaction in life True. with the texting and yeah. the Instagrams and the face spaces and mm-hmm. the stuff like that, I guess. But you're always one to change and kind of roll with the times. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just wondering, one last thing, Keith. Okay. Do you believe in aliens? No, I don't. Really? No, no. Why? Because I don't have the... I, I'm too religious, too, you know? Sure, it's, it's, sure. It's, 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 you know, I... I'm built around the creator and the faith involved in that. Now, maybe I answered the question too quickly. If there is other life on earth, it's probably not for me to decide or care about. I respect yeah, that, man. I, I respect that. Follow the book. The book will tell you what you need to do here. And if Absolutely, there's another man. book comes along, then we'll have to look at it. Well, at the end of the day, that's a good way to live. It's yeah. a really good way to live. And that's, I mean, we're losing that too a little sure. bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, to each their own. I try not to insert myself too yeah. hard into that, but... This has been really cool, man. So you're fishing. What are y'all fishing this year, then? Uh, we've got Lake of the Ozarks in three weeks, and then we're at our home lake bull in May. So we've got two big derbies that we we got some ground to make up. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, like, Patterson's telling me, like, you've got your big names in that Ozark region. Oh, yeah, there's some sticks in this thing, That man. Cody Huff guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that Cody guy takes our money. dominated yep. mm-hmm. the Ozarks. Uh, that McClellan guy's always yep. been pretty good. No, if you, it, you might as well be fishing a team version of a Bass Open. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the That's circuit what's crazy. On. Yeah. Is, I mean, I mean your lead guys can catch them. Yeah, they're, you know, a lot of these circuits, if you're, if you're fair, fairly talented at it, there's half the field that you could probably beat on any given day. Yeah. That's not the case here. you got to bring it. Yeah, which is what's fun, right? It's like athletics. Play somebody better than you. Sure. That's how you get better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's a really good point. But it, you also have to understand not to jump too quick from what some people say, right? Yeah, well, and, and, and figure it out yourself, right? Thank God. Yeah, yeah figure it out yourself. It, I've never been good at catching another guy's fish anyway. And, the, and I don't think many people are. There's no. probably exceptions to it. But, but understand what, what, the, what nature's telling you and just follow along. That's, that, my, uh, my previous partner, he was much older than me, he, he used to call it tuning into their channel. Okay. And I always thought it was a great explanation of it. It was like, man, we're tuning into their channel today. We're, it, it's, it's clear. Yeah. And, and that, to me, is the funnest part of the sport. Sure. Right. It's the the catching of the fish, the landing of the fish. All that has its own emotions tied to it. But knowing, like, I got it. I got you guys figured out today. Yeah. That's the that's the parts of real process. Yeah. Like uh-huh. It's like hunting, right? You don't sure. like 
going out. The harvest is the harvest. The harvest is yeah. the harvest, but mm -hmm. the finding, the, yeah. the, the chase. The work you put it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the chase is probably the right word. The yeah. best mm -hmm. fishermen I know, they like finding them just as much as they like catching them. Exactly. That's all they can think about. But the sport itself, I, I remember watching these old Bassmaster videos with like 70 of the same ranger yeah. like, taking oh, off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that... How did you build all them boats for them pros? Like, that's what I wanted, like, just for that. Well, things you know? were more simple then. But, yeah, I mean, I grew up, my first classic, I'm I'm making sure the fold-down seats turn to the crowd before they before Guido goes through the drive-in of the way. Man, fun times. You Absolutely. Know, it, it, I remember yeah. vividly, like, a, a couple of years there, it was me and Chad Brower, Denny's son. We're cool. still friends. He runs one of our boats. That's cool. But it's me and Chad, and we're wiping the boat down before they take the 482 VS through the drive-in and, and – Man, it just, uh, and, and so it, it's easy for me to reflect while we're here to see others here for their very first time mm -hmm. and go, I remember what that felt like. Absolutely. I remember how exciting that was. It's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. And I guess that's Erwin Jacobs, sure. Forrest Elwood, like there was some, that Forrest was a part of the big change in tournament fishing, I've not just said, boats, man. Yeah, you know, to me, this industry always had a guy come along at just the right time for just the right reason. And you named some of them. Ray Scott was one of yeah. them. Hank Parker's one of them. Ooh. You know, all these guys. Uh, I mentioned McKinnis, you know, McKinnis. Yep, Jerry. And, and when he when he got bass away from ESPN because he knew that it needed he did it for the good of the sport. You know, he, he just mm -hmm. backed up and said, he looked around and said, There's only one person that can do this and it's me. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And I think to a degree, maybe that's what we thought is when we looked at where we were in life in 2017 and 18. Mm -hmm that maybe somebody else can do it, but it's probably our obligation. So so let's just go put our heart and soul into it. Destiny, so to speak. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got to tell you, um, I owe a lot of my boat sales career to George Little. For and, sure. And I really look up too. to that guy. <laughs> and uh, I think that he's super humble and he's never one to talk about like what he's done. But uh -huh. I think that guy with walleye boats up, in the North Country sure. is a special story, and I know I'll never get him to tell it on the mic, but, like, he's a bit, like, walleye boats, multi-species boats. He had a for it, yeah. Like, it, wow. That's where it's like we got a stable full of that, yeah. right? And and I remember traveling with George in 1999 with the first 620 and just going through Minnesota. And, you know, it was a new territory for him. It, we had, like, zero market share. That's a number. <laughs> this and is 99. Yeah. Zero and, market share for Ranger Boats, yeah, which is and now. We're, and we're just kind of just like, we don't know any better. Yeah. We don't know any good. Back to Forest Point of asking everybody you see if they want a boat, enough of them will say yes. <laughs> and, and, and that took the right product, right? Again, back to Randy and the team on the engineering side. So it takes all of those things. But George is just, he's an incredible asset. But again, he's just, he's one of many in a stable that, that play, they play their role and they do it well. They do it extremely well, and that's how it works. That's what the, uh, I talked about team earlier, that it does take the team to build the dream. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you're riding up to Minnesota with that first 620, like what was the vision with that boat? Well, it somehow convinced people that fiberglass is a better technology for these bigger boats. You know, people are wanting these 200s and 250s, and now, for goodness sakes, we're putting V10 yeah. 400s on there. <laughs> and, and and it was. We, I think we were a bit ahead of our time. But the, the fun part about what – you know, just specifically the region that you're in, the Minnesota, Dakotas, is there is a real taste for quality. It's cultural. It goes Very back so. it goes back to the European influence that was planted there. And and I say it a lot that if you walk into their barn, you can look at their combines and realize they're not going to cut corners. They're going to buy the best, they're going to take care of it, and they're going to use it as the tool as it was that it's designed to do. Yeah. And the same works for their fun. The same works for their fun as they look at it and say, that's the best one. I think that's the one I'll take. Yep. I'm not going to lie, Keith. I'd be licking my chops if you told me the boat I had to sell against was a Lund Baron and I had a 620. Yeah. Like, and now, now that's the standard is a fiberglass multi-species fishing For sure. Platform. There's it lots of the, good boats out there. Oh, there no. And I wasn't dissing Lund, right? A, there's a difference in the best. Fact. Yeah. There's yeah. a difference in the best. And that's where we have to be every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys did it, man. And, well, and we're going to keep trying, way. too. Yeah. The culture, I mean, there's not a cabin in Minnesota without a ranger boat sitting on a boat <laughs> lift somewhere that's a Riata or a VS. But, and you know, like, you look back, it's taken 20 years. Totally. Yeah, it's but taken 20 years It's a to blip in time. Mm -hmm. What is time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we get way too deep <laughs> now, but sorry. Yeah. 
but yeah, that it, it those were fun times. That's yeah. it's mm-hmm. a cool story, and and I think you know, I just don't want people to forget George Little up in Minnesota no, nor do and I. what he did. Yeah. you know, because it, people don't understand. Like, oh, it's just cool. And then the test drives thing. He's kind of uh-huh. the guy who really pushed test drives. It yeah, seems like not before indifferent anybody than anybody else. You know, we're out there on Grand Lake today giving demos because. It, Go use these things. Yeah. We welcome that. Yeah, Go I can use tell them. you, but let, I'd rather let show the, you. Let the product do its talking. Totally. Leave me out of it. Well, yeah. it makes perfect sense when you had people saying that this IO Lund Baron's the best riding boat in the world. George didn't have to say, well, no, it's not. Well, all he had to say was, maybe, you tell me. Yeah. Hop in, bud. Well, I think the goal with the, with the brand that we have and, and are, are, are working feverishly to establish is and if you look at any of these brands within the respective category, who who gets the placement following the phrase as good as? Who gets the placement? Pick a cooler, <laughs> pick a pick a cloth, you know, a, a garment, pick whatever, a gun, and say, well, this one is as good as X. We want our name to be in that X. Cooler yeah. Yeti, yeah. Gun, would it be Remington yeah, or, or Beretta? You know, Beretta, whatever. Yeah, yeah and, and certainly there's varying opinions to for that. Sure. But for what's sure. the default? What's the yeah. default? You know, for years we called pop Coke, right? That's and, crazy. And, yeah, and, and, and you know, so you know, you somebody grabs this cup and say, "Well, it's good as a Coke." Yeah, my and, grandma loves Coke. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's that that that's what's so important about branding. Absolutely, it, it is it is it, it it's a reflection of what the product is absolutely and the service that's associated with it absolutely dude absolutely well dude this has been awesome i'm Good. gonna probably get let you get back to selling boats like very well, I hope, grateful i hope for i did time. some of that on this but we'll see well yeah. i think getting to know you getting to know the story and and ultimately these are boats but people getting to know the people behind this company to me is is more special than just looking at some rims and well showroom. i appreciate you saying so. that i think at the end of the day what what i want people to to truly know and believe is we're just a bunch of good old boys that aren't afraid to sweat and get dirty to build the very best fishing boat there is that's yep. all we are I can tell you have a true passion for it yeah and uh you talk to other boat people around here you you don't feel that mm, so. well, maybe i don't know i, I don't know anything different yeah, and nor does our team. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your, okay, if you could bass fish one lake in the world, what would it be? Oh, it'd have to be a northern smallmouth fishery, you know, and it would depend on the season, you know, whether it's whether it's Balax or Sturgeon Bay or St. Lawrence Seaway, any of that. That To me, and Forrest was always that way, you know, he won a bass invitational on a thousand islands. Really? You know? Yeah, and, 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 and I just, it, there's something about a northern smallmouth. Yeah. Oh. Don't get me wrong. I catch them on the grass of the Harris chain, or you know, uh, run a crankbait down a ledge at Table Rock. All that they're all fun, but there's just something about those northern fish that I really enjoy catching. That's my favorite fish to catch. Yeah. So we we get along fine in the boat. <laughs> How long are you, are you fishing Sturgeon Bay Open this year? Nope, I'm nope. I'm gonna be out of town. Otherwise, Dang. I would. Because you yeah. guys used to kind of do that every yeah, spring, right? Yeah, it's it's always a fun event. But who, who do they make you fish? They don't well, make you I've, fish with Parsons, do they? No, I okay. have. Okay. Yeah, we 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 did really well one day of the two days and he's yep. got the right jerk baits yep that's right <laughs> and then uh i fished with quartz before uh the first time i fished it we fished he's a beauty 16 we had a lot of fun and uh let's say i fished it with keith trip another one of our reps one time. so i think i fished it three times now cool I think man about it. cool yeah. what do you th- so how do you like fit you fish in a crowd each time that's my flotilla? problem that's my problem is uh, where i come from again a lake with a thousand miles of shoreline somebody gets within a quarter mile of you you're going to have a conversation you're getting and, the old yeah, six shooter yeah, ready yeah and, and and it's like up there it just really messes with my ability to focus well that's yeah. i mean the mistake i made up there is like well i don't want to fish in that. I, yeah i'm gonna try and do everywhere else so then we weigh 20 22 pounds and, and you're nobody swift kicking the dick you yeah know? Uh, <laughs> but yeah that is it's crazy how like you go to a lake like or you go like up to bay Nanak, right uh-huh and them things are dumb yeah and it is and then you go to sturgeon bay and i swear to god they can count the amount of marabou feathers on they, your freaking hair jig it shows like, you what pressure can do mm-hmm. well that's what makes a wrasse as good as he is right yeah. is because those fish are so pressured so in tune that lake current the angle of your cast mm-hmm. the noise you're making all that stuff plays into factor and if you don't live in a place like that you're not necessarily paying attention exactly. to those things it, you know it, to watch him swim a tube in sturgeon bay mm. it, it is literally like watching an artist 
You that know? sounds like a beautiful yeah, thing to watch. The, because he's floating that thing just right, and he's bumping the rock like the tripod we're talking against, and, <laughs> and, they, and that fish reacts to it. You know, and That's it, crazy. And it's just fun to see people that good at their craft. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, he's almost, like, is he shaking it? No, or he's just swimming it. Yeah, 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 just, this, mm-hmm. yeah, don't let me let it see yeah, sorry. out. Other people know how to, but but it, you can stand right alongside him, and he'll eat your lunch doing it. Yeah. See, that's what's, mm-hmm. that's what's beautiful about this sport. It is. And yeah. we all have that certain technique, maybe, yeah, that you, where like, we're like, yep, hold my beer. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to catch him. Yep. Yep. So, cool. Do you hate a Whopper Plopper, or do you like a Whopper Plopper? You know what? Uh, I don't, like, the baby seal. I don't like it as much as Patterson does. Patterson he, loves he's, that baby dead, seal. he's deadly with that thing. I try yeah. to Snapchat him every time I catch one on the baby seal. You should. Yeah. It's important to him. And it's uh <laughs> we've won we won a good bit of money doing it, so I you can't you hate have. on it. But For sure. it's a long day. Oh, he fishes as hard when we do that. Yeah. Trolling motor on eighty percent all day. Yeah. I figured it up. Rubber rail's like, almost touching the rock. We fished fourteen miles of shoreline. Dude, yeah, I, I did the math. Yeah, I like, didn't know what goodness. power fishing was. Till I, like that dude is a power yeah. fisherman. He's mm-hmm. like, Mm-mm, go, go, go. I'm like, dude, what if we left four of them? He's like, they ain't biting. Go, go, <laughs> next one. But Keith Afrin, dude, this Thank is a pleasure, you, man. I really enjoyed it. You're hope, a legend. I hope the audience man. did too. They will, man. You're a legend, and it it was great chatting with you and, and getting to know you better. And I know people back home are are gonna really like this one. Well, appreciate so. you very much. Awesome, dude. Well. Let's go sell some boats. Teal's Bass Galaxy, Keith Daffron, checking in, checking out.